This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creative business owners share their wisdom. It is six questions in nine minutes because creatives have a short attention span. So let's get to it. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. All right. My name is Jason Ellinger. Um, I guess I should do a little intro so people recognize me. What is up, guys? Jason Ellinger, Beard and Bowler. We are the Hero Collectors. And what we do, we are commercial filmmakers and we try and find the positive stories in the world and link them with brands who need some positive cause marketing. Uh, so that's, that's us in a nutshell. Love that. So tell us, Jason, what is the best thing about being in business? Best thing about being in business, you know, I started business as it was kind of like a, a, with a passion of mine. And then I kind of fell in love with the business aspect of it, running the books, running payroll, writing up estimates and quote, uh, just the logistics of it. I kind of fell in love with that as well. So I, I almost love all aspects of it. And then doing that sort of stuff with a thing that you're passionate about is is really cool as well. But the best part about being in business, mine in particular, is when we get to hear stories of people who've been through like the worst, the worst things imaginable. And, and most of our stories are focused specifically on the problem that people are facing because that's what draws people in and gets people to self-identify and self-select. Mm. Um, and then about 75% of that is a problem. And then the the guide usually comes along. That's that's typically the the nonprofit, in some cases, the business for our commercial clients who we choose to work with. But they are the guide, and they help resolve the problem. So hearing these stories and the people that have been through utter tra tragedy resolve in the end to who they are right now is probably the best part of the business and for me and sometimes you don't see it all come together through a 45 minute interview until you chop that down and rearrange it into three minute sections like i was a drug addict addicted to heroin on the streets and now i'm a chef in the top restaurant because of this organization that helped me through and uh, being able to clarify and simplify a message of hope down to that is probably the best part uh, of what we do in business wow that is powerful. Yeah. So I hear from other creative business owners that they avoid money matters like the plague. Tell me your thoughts on that. Money matters in as far as what? Well, you know, sometimes it could be money issues that they're not making enough or there's not enough revenue or profit. Or sometimes it's really just, I am not going to open the business now because mm. it's too intimidating. Yeah. You know, I did sort of fall in love with the numbers as well. And that's kind of my area for, for certain aspects of the business. Doing this now for a little over 11, 12 years. In this creative industry, there are a lot of slow seasons, peaks and valleys. Uh, almost every creative industry, there's, there's slow seasons. And that's very tough for a lot of creatives to navigate. And some people just, they can't cut it. That's the hardest part is going through a slow season. For us, it's February and July, August. It's sometimes like hurting cats to get clients' attention when school is starting again. But now, like in the past two, three years, I've started paying attention to those trends and knowing that and then preparing for it and starting to run lean just all the way through in pre preparation for that slow season or those two slow seasons that are coming. So I, I try not to avoid it. I try to hit it head on, like in the craziness of quarter four for us. That's when things are just blowing up and uh, more than half of our revenue is made in, in two months for the year. And we try and keep our, our head on straight and continue with uh, whether it's marketing or sales, making sure we're lined up and ready for February because we always say to each other, my partner and I, like winter is coming. And right. uh, prepping for that. And now knowing that there's a slump in summer too, we, we're kind of like summer is coming. So uh, <laughs> We try and prep for those two slow seasons and spread things out uh, evenly across the year, but we try not to run from it. We try and hit it head on because we know how hard those slow seasons can get and uh, it's not for everybody. And when people say they want to, you've inspired me to, to quit my job at the news uh, like you did and, and pursue a passion. Uh, what, what is your advice? Uh, keep working your job at the news <laughs> for like another two years while you do this because you will see zero dollars in, in profit. There's very specific ways you can you can start a business to run super lean, but not everybody does that. They spend, they buy gear, especially creatives, and they think they need all these tools. And you really don't to get started. You can rent, you can hire freelancers. There's there's so much that you can do to run super lean. But yeah, hit the hit the money issue head on and attack it head on. Um, I love that. And yeah. the 
biggest takeaway for me there was also staying proactive and being mindful of trends, especially for a seasonal industry like you. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you. So what other successful creative business owners like yourself should be on my podcast? <laughs> there are a few. One in particular I can think of, his name is Matt Silderman. He's not huge on LinkedIn yet, but he is a school teacher who decided to start an SEO slash web design company. And just to watch him grow has been been amazing. And to see him join joining coaching groups and to like double his revenue every year to where it's not, not that he has passive income, but he's still doing the school teacher thing, but mm. he's also doing the business and growing the business simultaneously, but being smart about it and not quitting his job. And then summertime comes. And of course he has like a couple of months to dive in, but his schedule is just like insane every day, 5 a.m. He gets two hours to work, comes home from school, gets a chunk of two or three hours to work. And he's worked out that all out with his wife, but seeing it, somebody be able to take that side hustle. And I think in the next two years, he can just turn it to full time if he wanted to, but that's definitely someone I'd recommend having on. Thank you so much. So what is the one piece of wisdom or advice that other creative business owners should know? I think I I said a little bit of this before. Somebody told me once a year or two ago to run lean, even when things are good, run lean. And that kind of been a mantra for my partner and I, we always say to each other, run lean, run lean, run lean. And it's just like almost something that you need tattooed on your arm. (laughs) It basically means things are going to be good and you're going to have clients and you're, you're going to be at a point where you're turning down work like, ah, this little project's too little for me. I don't, I don't need this. And that happens to every creative in the season. I mean, it's almost like other clients can sniff that out. Like, oh, he's doing well. Let me jump on and try and tack a project onto him as well. And then you have multiple clients at once, almost too much to manage. But there is a turn where you've sat and you've ridden that sales wave, so to speak, and you've stopped reaching out, you stopped marketing, you stopped doing sales, and it's going to slow down again because 30, 60, 90 days ago, you've stopped doing sales. Right. And you've just kind of ridden that wave of a few clients that have come in and then it it kind of thins out again. So run lean and don't stop prospecting even when things are good. Even when it's very hard to manage, try and do it an hour a day uh, prospecting, meaning messages on LinkedIn, emails, phone calls. They're tough for us creatives to call people and be like, hey, remember me? Uh, Yeah, I want to buy some video. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and it's not even like that direct, but just to touch base with people and mm. you'd be surprised how many of those like clockwork 30, 60, 90 days later, reach back out and, and say, Hey, I remember you coming to me, you know, a month or two ago. And now we have somebody that we can use you for, Nice. you know, have patience, prospect, call the people, stay top of mind, email, social media, or just a phone call works best. Then it'll come back around in two to three months. But that two to three months can be a long wait if you need money now, but have patience, keep prospecting and run lean. I guess those are three pieces of advice. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Now the most important question of the podcast, Kakaya Vasha Lubima Musica, or in English, what's your favorite music? I have to work out music is kind of uh, is, is metal, like 90s rock and metal. But uh, what I'm really like into is that gets my mind and my juices flowing is movie soundtracks, believe, believe it or not. Um, so Hans Zimmer. Yes. I, he's one of my favorite composers. So sometimes I just like blast the Dark Knight or Inception or even Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack in a car. And it just starts this certain part of my brain to think. And that's where like ideas are generated. And I think it's so important to have something that stimulates the idea creation part of your brain. And uh, for me, that's music and audio books, soundtracks, movie soundtracks and audio books. I love that. It's funny. I actually listened to all three John Wick soundtracks while I was writing my book. (laughs) (laughs) It's such a great stimuli for a lot of times you listen to music and it's mindless, especially pop. And that's why people listen to it to get away. But not everybody's an entrepreneur that needs this to make their money. And that's why I definitely highly recommend movie soundtracks to stimulate it. That and audiobooks for sure. Well, thank you, Jason, for being on. What's your website so people can find you? Our website is www.beardandbowler.com. Awesome. This is Olga Kirschenbaum with 9 Minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creative business owners share their wisdom. Make sure to check out my blog at ragstorichesconsulting.com.
to get money insights you haven't heard before.